a friend of mine told me that I should do the obligatory beach scene video, which I'm doing right now. As you can see, there are a ton of people littering the beach. And I don't mean what they leave behind, I mean just them in general. Um, what I'm about to do, you know, go on this trip, you know, I have some I have some concerns because I'm leaving my mom, my stepdad here. I came down two years ago. This wasn't my plan. I was going to just leave society. And then Lauren said, why don't you come down, or are you going to come down and see your mom? To which I said, well, yeah. I had never thought about it. And my original plan was come down here, stay for a couple months, just regroup, and then take off. On a bicycle. Well, since I was here... My mom was able to get her cataract surgery, which she had to have, and there was nobody who was going to be able to help her get back and forth to get all that done. She has macular degeneration in one eye, she's, so she's basically almost blind in that eye. And the, without the cataract surgery, she was really not too well off. So she was able to get that done because I was here. Thank you, Lauren. And my dad, my stepdad, got sick and was in uh, the hospital with pneumonia. My mom wasn't going to call 911 at first because when you get old you get this fear of people are going to think that I can't take care of myself or my loved ones so she didn't want to call anybody but I insisted and I called and he's fine now but he could have died too again thank you Lauren and then in March of 2012 my mom fell and broke her hip and I was in the process of trying to get this new job so that morning I was actually home when it happened had my stepdad been the only one there I'm not sure that he would have been able to take care of it because of the simple fact that he has vascular dementia and when I watch him sometimes even trying to do something like use a phone he's kind of lost so I don't know if she would have survived that so again thank you Lauren but with all that being said you know with me taking off I'm kind of concerned about what's going to happen you know, two years ago before I got down here, they were doing just fine. They were surviving. But now that I've been here for a while and I see, you know, how difficult it can be for them, just the simplest things, just getting out, going to a restaurant, having dinner is really, really difficult for them. Going grocery shopping is really, really difficult for them. You know, I wonder sometimes what's going to happen. Now, when my brother was here, after my mom broke her hip, because I was starting a new job at that point, um, he did set up some things for them. And thanks, Frank, that was great. Um, they have a home health nurse that comes in once a week that sets up all my stepdad's medications so they're all good to go. Um, they have a home aide who comes in and will do light cleaning and go to the grocery shop grocery store and shop for them things like that and then they also have uh, a life alert bracelets you know the whole help I fall and I can't get up kind of thing so they'll, they'll be okay I guess but they're 80 and 82 respectively my mom and my stepdad and I still worry and if I take off on this selfish excursion I'm afraid of that day when I get that phone call that something happened but like I was saying on Facebook it's a matter of spiritual triage the pain of I miss my kids you know after I left my ex I missed out on a lot of things and I still do I stay in contact with them, but I still miss out. The pain of some of the friends that I'm going to miss, some more than others, obviously. The pain of what if something happens to my mom and Bill. And then the pain of... I was stopped in the middle of this trip. But I still need to do this. When one of the pains becomes more... more huge than the others, that's the one that you deal with. And at this point that tugging at my shoulder, like, let's go, let's go, it's killing me. So, as triage goes, 
you deal with the most critical thing first and move from there. I am kind of going into freak out mode a little bit about, oh my god, what am I doing? But I've been a survivor. I know what to do. I've already had some offers from some friends up north that when I get up there, they might be able to hook me up with some little side jobs and stuff like that, and that's really great. Because it's basically going to be leaving here with a, a definitely a finite and not a self-sustaining amount of money. And I'll need gas money to keep going in my travels and food and stuff like that. It'll be okay. I've survived a lot worse than this, but it's just, it's getting a little freaky. Uh, my friend Robin, <clears throat> about this whole, you know, feeling like I missed out on the journey, she made a comment that got me thinking, you know, this this hiccup in this really is just part of the journey. I mean, hell, I was going to do a bicycle trip. That didn't pan out because I got three days into it and almost got hit by some cars, so I took a train. Well, I had never taken a train across the country, so that was that was part of the trip. The people I met on there, the things that happened. This was just a two-year part of the trip, and it worked out well because my mom and Bill, they're going to be okay. So am I. I am at Indian Shores Beach. The beach, as you can see, it's just okay. Far too many humans. Per usual. <laughs> uh, this part of the video. I, I'm doing during the middle of the day, which is unfortunate, because I, when I did this video the other day and I had too much wind noise, I had to redo it. So the second part of the video, the ending of it that I kind of edited and had fun with, all takes place close to sundown, but that's okay. Here it is about 2 in the afternoon. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. End of July looks like the count, the blast off date. Could be middle of August, we'll see. So I can always work like one more pay period and get one more check just to make sure I got a little sandbag money. But that's what I'm gonna do. Love you guys. Bye bye.